God is good. Amen. God is good. John chapter 12. No, no projector tonight. John stole it. No, actually, I have it. I, we took it down there uh, to uh, there in Norwood, Missouri, which is just close to Mountain Grove, Missouri, right along Highway 60, and uh, packed it all up and came back with it. And um, we've been carrying all this equipment uh, all spring, uh, especially since our house caught on fire and, um, you know, our camera, projector, little table the projector sits on, all the cords, all the microphones, everything that goes with it. And, you know, as soon as I get done, uh, generally we've got to pack everything up and head somewhere else because we're going somewhere else. And somewhere... Somewhere, it's just a, a, a short area to cover, but somewhere between um, Indiana and Wichita, Kansas, is the uh, electrical cord to the camera that I use to record. Just somewhere in that general area there, there's an electrical cord somewhere. So if you see it, it's mine. Bring it to me. All right. Uh, we don't know where it is. So we got to Wichita and I couldn't find it. But I remembered that the camera has these batteries built in and every time you plug it in, it charges the batteries. So what I did in Wichita was completely off battery power. Recorded everything on battery power. But then um, I was going to record something else and I'm going, I can't find the cord. I have no idea where the cord is. So if you see it anywhere between Fort Wayne, Indiana and Wichita, Kansas, put it in the mail and send it to us. All right. John chapter 12. Everybody have a good day today. Everybody have a bad day today. No, no bad days. Your kids, school's out. You can't have a bad day. You're wasting summertime if you have a bad day during summertime, right, Michaela? Yeah, you went to school today. Oh, summer school. Okay. Well, enjoy that. What do you do in summer school? What'd you do today? Easy stuff, right? When I was in uh, fifth grade, what year would that have been? Probably, let's see, how old are you in fifth grade? 10? So this would have been 75, 76, somewhere, well, I was 10 and 76, so maybe 76, 77. We must have gotten so much snow during the winter time that they had all these makeup days and they decided that rather than us going to school all the way through the month of June that they would have us come in in order to fulfill the days that we had to be in school they would have us come in and go to school on a Saturday for half a day so all the buses are running they go and pick up all the kids on Saturday bring us all into the school on Saturday and what does our teacher do? He's the coolest teacher in the world. He goes down to the TV room, gets TV, turns on the cartoons, cartoons that day. <laughs> and we had lunch. We didn't, had, they didn't serve breakfast back then. And because um, I guess they didn't know we were poor. So um, yeah, we just got lunch, but we got, got to watch cartoons all day and then ate lunch and they put us back on the bus and brought us home. And we're going, what was the purpose of that? Because that's exactly what I would have done today had I been home, too. Anyway. All right. John chapter 12. And we've got some uh, prayer requests we're going to make mention of tonight. I, uh, I heard, or it was called into us, 
that there was another shooting in Tulsa at a medical building. Um, the shooter shot himself. Yeah, I tell you, it just saves us a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, courtroom time is what it does. And, um, but then you just, you're left wondering why stuff like that happens. Well, I will tell you this, and there is absolutely no doubt in my mind about it, whether it was this guy or the guy who shot up that school a couple weeks ago uh, down in Texas, that is a devil inside that person driving them to do that. And if you don't believe that, I'll take you to some places in the Bible, and I'll show you that here in a minute, all right? But let's pray for all these families that are affected by this. Uh, it is the reason why we have people in this building right now carrying guns. We will not just sit here and let somebody come in and start shooting us without us shooting back. Amen. That's, that, is, that, is at, that is just as wrong as the guy who does the shooting to begin with. To stand by idly and watch him when you have it in your ability to do something about it, to stop it. It is just as wrong to not stop it. And I am 100% for hospitals, schools, training, not just, giving them, not just giving them a gun, train them. Training teachers, training some of the men, train the janitor, train whoever. Do what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, go down here to the VFW hall and ask, anybody want to help guard our schools? I guarantee you they'd show up. Um, especially if you bought them beer afterwards, they'd show up. But I guarantee you, uh, that would put a stop to that stuff. It would. If somebody knew they would never get through that door without being shot themselves, that would put a stop to that. But these stupid liberals are going, what, we, need, we don't need more guns in there. We need less. That is, an, that is a ridiculous statement. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for uh, being with us today. We thank you for the life you've given us to live. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us through another day. Father, I thank you, Lord, for uh, the blessing uh, that you allowed me to be a part of yesterday. Lord, I can't get it out of my mind. Uh, those people were such great people to preach to. And Father, I, I know, God, that you, that you opened up some hearts, opened up some eyes. And Father, my prayer is, is that once this video gets out on the Internet, that one pastor... One pastor somewhere will watch it and God, you will lead him the way you led me out of the wilderness of all of these false Bibles, these fake counterfeit translations, lead them to the one true gospel. And Lord, that's my prayer. That's the that's the turmoil that I went through, the battle that I fought. Probably the reason why the devil decided to attack my family. Lord, I pray, dear God, that you would make it worth it. Make it worth it, God. Don't let the pain and the sorrow and the trouble that we've been through, Lord, don't let that go in vain. Let it count for something. So, Lord, just bless this church, bless this ministry, bless these families, Lord, uh, that are affected by this shooting. And I pray, dear God, that this country would wise up and realize that we could put a stop to this. Let the weak become strong. 
And Father, teach us, Lord, that the sword and bearing the sword truly is never in vain. So bless your word tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. I, I do want to deal with this just for a minute. Turn to Ephesians uh, chapter 2. Um, I use this verse a lot. Um, I just believe, I believe that Muhammad Atta, the man who flew Flight 11 into the World Trade Center, that man had a devil in him. There's no doubt in my mind about it. He had a devil in him and taking the lives of all of those innocent people in those Two buildings, and then the Pentagon, uh, whoever was part of that, had a devil working in them. And um, the mass shootings, uh, Sandy Hook Elementary School, uh, even the, what was it, that gay bar down in Florida. Uh, and, this, of course, the school last week in Texas, and now uh, this going on in Tulsa. There's no doubt in my mind uh, the the school shooting in um, oh, where was it Colorado several years ago, huh? Yeah, Columbine, the Columbine High School, and especially a young girl named Cassie who was hiding, and as those two teenage boys with those guns, when they found her, they asked her a very specific question. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? And she said, yes. Kapow! And they shot her dead right then. I guarantee you she's in heaven. Whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I deny before my Father which is in heaven. Whosoever confesses me before men, him will I confess before my father which is in heaven those two young those two young boys were devil possessed and Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins where in time ye in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience so we find here in Ephesians 2, verse 2, that everybody who is not being led by the Holy Spirit of God, who is not walking in the light of God, trusting in God, following their Lord, reading their Bible, living the way the Bible tells us to live, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, all of those who are not born-again Christians the devil is calling all of the shots in your life. He is telling you what to do. He is giving you orders. And, and generally, these orders, we love, to, we love to do it. Who remembers the son of Sam? Remember that? That goes all the way back to the 70s. His name was David Berkowitz. And when they finally caught up with him, he had, he, his story was that there was a dog named Sam that was commanding him to go and shoot and kill all of these people. Well, what happened was that David Berkowitz, while he's in prison, turns his life over to the Lord and was born again. And he said, I was hearing the voices in my head telling me to go and murder this people. Go out and look for people to kill. He was under the influence of a devil or a group of devils telling him to go and murder these people. The internet wants you to believe that the CIA is running mind control programs and they're the ones who are behind all of this. It's much deeper than that. That's just for people who don't believe that there are gods, angels, and devils. 
that are fighting a war right now over the hearts and the souls of mankind. But we see right here that those people are led by the prince of the power of the air, spirit that works in the children of disobedience. In verse 3 it says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. In other words, that, could, that guy who went into this medical building, killed these people, that could have been any of us. Any one of us who could get so deep in sin so as that everything that the devil wants us to do, we just do it and have no control over ourselves whatsoever. That could have been us. And yet God stepped in, God intervened, and God run them guys out, cleaned the house out, and made us holy. However, Jesus taught us the parable. He said, when an unclean spirit leaves somebody, he wanders in the wilderness. He comes back to the dwelling place that he used to live, which was somebody's life. And he finds it all swept and garnished. And when he comes back, he doesn't come back by himself. He brings seven others worse than him with him. And they all dwell in that person's life. And now the latter end of that person is worse than their beginning. That is a universal blanket teaching all through. It gives you an idea now of what really goes on in this world. You can't mind control everybody on the planet just by showing them movies and comic books and TV shows and commercials and things like that. You can't mind control everybody like that, but the devils can. And believe me, there's, there's more than plenty of devils that can take over the minds and the hearts of everybody in this world. Hey, do you believe that? Say amen. So when you start, you want to talk about conspiracy theories. And I'm still waiting. And if you see it, let me know. Because generally, whenever there's a mass shooting, there's always a group of people on the internet who say, that didn't really happen. Those were all crisis actors. The government made it look like they put out this story and they made these people act this part and they made it look like mass killing, doing that so they can come in and get all of our guns. Now, if that story shows up, I want to know because I guarantee you it's going to. Okay, the the uh, the Boston Marathon never took place. Uh, play and nobody actually their legs blown off and nobody this and nobody that and I'm just going people would you stop believing that stuff okay all right back to uh, where, where was we John chapter 12 John chapter 12 let's get into the word of God here uh, we've been talking about Judas uh, who had the bag, he was a thief, and uh, we were dealing with this idea of, of thievery, the devil being the thief. Um, the thief cometh not but for to kill and to destroy, and so on and so on. And uh, I can't remember where we left off last Wednesday night. Uh, I believe... Yeah, let's let's take our Bibles and well, let me let me read uh, this part here out of John chapter 12 and we'll, then we'll go in our Bibles to uh, Joel chapter two. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus, which uh, uh, was which had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. Uh, there they made him a supper and Martha served. 
but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Now we know we're, we're understanding Judas now. Judas is being introduced to us. And the first thing that it says about Judas is that you get why he's asking this. He's asking this because he's a thief. Because it says in verse 6, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag. The bag was the purse that the disciples carried around and any donations that came in to Jesus for his daily bread, his daily care, uh, every night, Jesus w had to stay or sleep someplace, somewhere, and it didn't matter to Christ. He could, he was, when he was born, he was laid in a manger. So he, it wasn't that he needed some palace somewhere to sleep. He didn't have to sleep in the uh, Trump Tower or anything like that. Uh, he was used to sleeping wherever he was. Uh, but Judas Iscariot is carrying the bag. And what we derive from this is, is that he is dipping into the money. He's, he is a money hungry person. He's a thief. He's carrying the bag. Uh, and verse 7, then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying. Hath she kept this for the poor? Always ye have with you. But me, you have not always. Now, uh, in Joel chapter 2, we're given a prophecy, a thing that is going to happen in the future. Now, there's, of course, there's different opinions. Some say that all of these prophecies have already occurred um, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel. So, and so we don't really have to worry about any of this because they've all been fulfilled and they're there just for historical background. And we're to look at that and say, boy, wow, wow, what a neat story and so on. But I submit to you that even though parts of this has been fulfilled, it has not all been perfectly fulfilled. And there is coming to this world a mighty army. It is referred to as God's army, but only in the sense that God controls this army. God created this army. He controls this army. God is the one who decides when this army is going to be released and what they're going to do so in that sense yes it is God's army now this this is called Joel's army and there is a whole group of I would say way out there wacky who refer to themselves as Joel's army and trust me they do some weird stuff. One of their big names is a guy by the name of Todd Bentley. Todd Bentley is known for his wild mannerisms, his dress. He's got tattoos all over his body. Says that God wanted him to wear those tattoos. I disagree because God specifically said in the law that you're not to print ink marks on your skin. God specifically said that. He said, don't do it. Uh, Todd Bentley was also notorious for being a womanizer. And he's being called to all these churches all over the country and all over the world. And, and recommended as some great preacher. And he can heal people and do all this stuff. 
And yet he's having an affair with this woman. He ends up divorcing his wife and marrying his mistress so that it's now okay. It's okay now because he married his mistress. Todd Bentley on one occasion, uh, uh, an elder woman was said she came up to be healed and, and uh, said she was having pain in her, in her be belly area. And Todd prayed over and laid hands on her and everything like that. Finally, his reception kicked her in the stomach and said, be healed. And of course, she fell to the ground. And I'm going, this guy's crazy. But Todd has a tattoo right below his neck, Joe, that look like army dog tags. And one dog tag says Joel's and the other dog tag says army. Joel's army. He believes that he is going to be part of God's mighty army mentioned in the book of Joel. But let's look at the book of Joel to see how God describes this army. Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow you the trumpet in Zion. Underline that because that tells you that this prophecy is related to the trumpet judgments of the book of Revelation. Seven of them. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now he's going to describe this day. It's a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Anytime you see clouds in the Bible, wake up. When Jesus appears, where is he going to appear? In the clouds. So we're looking at a time when Jesus is going to make his appearance. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people, underline that. Here's one description of them. They are a great people. In other words, they have a large number of them. And a strong people. In other words, their strength is unmatched by any other army in the world. There hath not been ever the like, meaning there has never been an army on this earth like this army. Never. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Notice verse 3. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. In other words, a beautiful garden. And I think I mentioned last week, let's say that that, that Garden of Eden is where you're living now because God's been blessing you or things have been going well in your life. And uh, you just feel like you're living in the Garden of Eden every day. You, maybe you and your marriage, uh, your, you know, the way you your spouse are getting along, things couldn't be better. Uh, maybe your whole family. I mean, you just feel God all in your family. But watch out. Because if the land looks like the Garden of Eden before they get there, after they leave, what does it look like? is as the Garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. What have I said about the sodomite agenda in this country or in this world? That they will not stop until this entire nation receives the judgment of God and has been turned to ashes. That's when they'll stop. But until then, they're not going to stop. Did I tell you the did I tell you the story about the kindergarten teacher, the male kindergarten teacher, who wore a dress to school every day, but and they, he had to wear a mask, so a lot of his students didn't know that he was a man. They thought she was a woman. And one day he took his mask off. He has a full beard on this. And one student, and I, I just I almost picture Bub doing this, going, you're a man. 
Ugh. And this, this gay sodomite teacher was just so thrilled that his, he was accepted by this student. I, I wouldn't call it that. Listen, those kids are not stupid. They know the difference between a man and a woman. And they're not being fooled. So anyway, now um, nothing shall escape them. Verse 4, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. All right. This is not a human army. It's not a human army. It is an army of devils. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Verse 6, before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. Mighty men is the term that Genesis referred to the giants that way. The same became mighty men of old, men of renown. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone in his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. In other words, they are an impenetrable, unstoppable army. Verse 8, neither shall one thrust another. In other words, you could go after him with a sword, with a spear, a javelin, a 50 caliber, a bazooka. Uh, grenade launcher, whatever you've got, and you're not going to harm them. Um, in verse 80, when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. This is an army of supermen. Now remember, Todd Bentley believes that he is part of this army. He believes that he calls, he calls his army and those who follow him the new breed. Meaning that they only, that God is going to alter their, and change their DNA so that they become a race of supermen that cannot be defeated. Now, look in they shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the wall, and they shall climb up upon the houses, and they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Remember, Judas Iscariot, he's a thief. And I, I'm pretty sure... Knowing what I know about Todd Bentley and others like him is that they, they put on all of this stuff. They do all these magic tricks. They put on all these fake signs and wonders. These, these are the kind of guys that all of a sudden gold dust will be falling down upon everybody. And they're saying that God is releasing gold dust into this congregation. And what it is, is somebody is throwing, you know, sparklies into the cooling system or the heating system of that church and blowing it out. The, but everybody believes that this is a miracle from God. In some cases, they'll have feathers coming down. And the guys will say, these are angel feathers. Oh boy, God is here. And his angels are here. See the angel feathers? And they're like chicken feathers or something like that. But people believe this stuff, Chris. But the actuality of it is, is that this is not an army of saints that are going to take over the world for God. This is an army of devils. 
Look at verse 10. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. That one event is mentioned, Isaiah 13, Joel 2, 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke 21, Acts chapter 2, Revelation chapter 6, and on and on and on. It's mentioned all through the Bible. This one event where the sun is darkened, the moon withdraws its shining or is turned to blood, and the stars of heaven, they either go dark or a third of them fall to the earth. It's all the same event. And on that day, when the stars of heaven, the angels, are cast down to the earth, it is over for mankind. That is God's signal that he is done saving people on this earth. Because there comes a time, just like in the days of Noah, was there, a, was there a day when God finally said, I'm done. Nobody else is going to get saved. So Noah, in seven days, I'm going to shut the door of the ark with you in it and your family and all the animals. And that's going to be the it. That's going to be the last day. Nobody else is, I'm not going to open the door for anybody else. They're not going to climb through the windows. They're not going to dig through the wood. Nobody's getting in. I'm done. And that's what this day that's coming is going to be. It is the day when God says, I've had enough of mankind. And listen, it, on days like this, we hear, another, hear of another shooting. Well, you know, you just know that in the, on the Democratic side of Washington, D.C., they're in meetings tonight, right now, trying to figure out ways of gaining control of our gun. You just know they are. Now, uh, take your Bible, turn to uh, Revelation 9. What I just described for you out of Joel is exactly the same army that God describes for us in Revelation 9. And you'll see where they come from. In Revelation 9, verse 1, And the fifth angel sounded. This is the fifth trumpet. Remember he said in Joel, Blow the trumpet, sound the alarm. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, hell. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a rock and roll concert. No, it doesn't say that. I just was trying to see if you were paying attention. Is there a lot of smoke at a rock and roll concert? Okay. And it's not all tobacco either. Is the smoke of a great furnace. And then the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Because that's normally what, what locusts go after is grass and leaves. Neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Remember in Revelation 7, they, they sealed the servants of God, the 12 tribes in their foreheads with the name of God. So in verse 5, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. That's what we just read that in Joel chapter 2. And um, on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces, watch this, these gods, these devils are androgynous. Their faces were the faces of men 
And they had hair as the hair of women. I featured this a few years ago. Uh, Europe has a talent contest, much like American Idol or British, Britain's Got Talent or Americans Got Talent. And it's called Eurovision. And a few years ago, a man won the contest. I can't remember his name. But his whole spiel, his whole, whole part of his act was, was that he was a cross-dresser, a, a transvestite, transgender. He had long female-looking hair and a beard. And the song that won him the contest was a song called Rising Like a Phoenix. The phoenix bird is a, is a type of the Antichrist. The phoenix bird, in order to reincarnate itself, it is cast itself down into a fire, burns up completely, and out of the ashes rises up a new phoenix bird. And it's a picture of the beast who's rising up out of the, the furnace of the bottomless pit. That's what it's a picture of. Rise like a phoenix. But when I see that, when I see people like that, the face of a man, obviously the face of a man with the beard and the mustache and everything, but he's got the hair of a woman. He's dressed like a woman. I know what spirit then that is. It is this spirit that you see coming up out of the pit. Whenever you see the whole transgendered move, this school Wearing this flowy dress, talking in a high voice, but he's got he's a chunky guy. He's got a big beard on. I know what spirit that is that has him in its grip. It's this androgynous spirit that has the face of a man and the, and the hair of a woman. And I'll tell you what really gets me. My goodness, it's 10 after 8. What really gets me. What was it that really gets me? Huh? Yeah, the woman had a beard. Oh, what really gets me is when people say that God is both male and female. That really burns me. And I can name names of people who believe that. Of course, Todd Bentley does. Kenneth Copeland believes it. He taught on it. Rick Warren believes in it. And then they both teach that since Adam was made in the image of... Now, now stop and think about this logically. If the same God, both masculine and feminine, then us that as a man Chris we're not to wear the attire of a woman and a woman is not to wear the attire of a man how can that be our God who is both male and female by his law Rick Warren believes it and they teach that God is both male and female, that when he created Adam, he created Adam androgynous, both male and female. And that when God created the woman, all he had to do was remove the female part out of Adam. That's all he had to do. That's a lie. And you know what? If you read other translations of the Bible, you might get that from there, but you'll never get it from a King James. Never. The King James is... Very clear on this. Male and female created he, God, in the masculine, them separately. Adam was created a male. Eve was made a female by a God who is always referred to in the masculine. Never in the feminine. Never. So what clothes would God wear if God is both masculine and feminine? What clothes would God be allowed to wear if he was both male and female? 
It doesn't make sense, does it? If it doesn't make sense biblically, then it's, it's a lie. Amen? 